Oh, hey, how you doing there, guys? It's Peach. So I want to tell you a little story today, but before I get into it, uh, it's a story about the disciples, and I want to give you a little background information because this is like my one of my favorite stories in the New Testament because it is just so ridiculous to me. It makes like no sense, okay? So picture this. These disciples are handpicked by Jesus to follow him. They follow him like night and day. They have slumber parties. They get to eat together and witness all these miracles and they get to like be taught by Jesus and like they walked with Jesus and like we walk with Jesus but like these guys walked with Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and like I said, they got to experience all these miracles. They saw Jesus uh, heal withered hands and paralyzed hands and paralyzed legs and paralyzed people and uh, sick people and they made demonic people not demonic people you know what I'm saying and they got to witness all of these miraculous miracles one of the coolest ones being like Jesus stopping a storm with his voice just saying like storm stop and the storm stopped and the disciples are like you know and uh, and not only did they get to witness these miracles but they got to be a part of these miracles so think about um, the time when uh, when Jesus and the disciples uh, went to this land and all these people followed them. And next thing you know, there's a crowd of 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. And Jesus got to sit down and just teach to these 5,000 people. And eventually the disciples were like, Jesus, these people got to go. It's getting late. They need to grab some food. And Jesus said, you feed them. And the disciple says, with what? And uh, Jesus says, well, what you got? And they said, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. And it's like not enough to even feed the disciples. And Jesus says, that's perfect. So Jesus took this bread, right? Raised it up to heaven. And he thanked God for the little that he had. And he gave it to disciples and told the disciples to hand it out to these 5,000 people. First of all, I would have been like, that's a lot of people. But these disciples, they were champs. They stuck to it. They handed out the food and it says that everyone ate and was satisfied off of these five loaves of bread and these two fish. The disciples got to be a part of that. They got to hand out these bread and fish, right? And that didn't happen just once. It happened two times. The second time it was 4,000 people and they picked up seven baskets of leftovers afterwards. So anyway, this story that I'm going to talk about is in Mark 8 after they just fed these 4,000 people and they got on a boat to leave. They just fed 4,000 people with a couple pieces of bread and a couple fishes, right? I just, want, I just want you to remember that. So I'm in Mark chapter 8, verse 10. And it says, And immediately he got to the boat with his disciples, and he went to this di district of Dalmanutha. The Pharisees came and uh, began to argue with them, seeking um, from him a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit, and he said, Why does this generation seek a sign, right? And so he's on this boat and the disciples with him and they go off into the water and uh, verse 14, listen to this crazy conundrum, right? It says, now they had forgotten to bring bread and they only had one loaf in the boat. <laughs> I love that. They just fed these 4,000 people with all these bread and fish and yet they only had one loaf and you'd think that these guys would be like, at least we have Jesus, but this is what they said. Jesus knew what they were thinking in verse 15 and he said he cautioned them saying watch out beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod and he gave them this like profound thing right to watch out for what they're doing and they're like whatever Jesus and in verse 16 they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread okay so okay just think about that for a minute and I'm gonna keep going you can pause the video and laugh for a second so uh, verse 17 it says, And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes do you not see? Having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember? This is what I would have asked. Do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000? How many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And he made the disciples answer. I love that. He made them answer. And they said, Twelve. And in verse 20, and the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up then? And they said to him, seven. And Jesus asks the question of the century right here. He says, do you not yet understand? 
That's exactly what I think I would have asked. Do you not yet understand? He fed all these people with bread, and you guys have all the ingredients you need to have a feast because you have one loaf of bread, and yet they're arguing because they're worried that they're not going to get to eat. And that's like so human. That is so human. When it comes to food, everything goes out the window like you're going to die. You have like spaghetti in the pantry, but you don't want to make it. You know what I'm saying? And these disciples only had one piece of bread, and Jesus says all this stuff, and do you not yet understand? And I like to think, like, since I am super Christian and I'm, like, super holy and stuff, that if I was in this situation, I would have acted different, right? I would have gave the bread to the other people and I would have asked Jesus if I would have said, it was, it's an honor to fast for you today, Jesus. And Jesus probably would have said, like, hey, man, here's, like, a steak for being faithful. But you know what? I honestly don't think that's what would have happened because something, something clicked to me. As, as God was revealing um, this this week to me, right? The disciples didn't have the Holy Spirit during this time. And because they didn't have the Holy Spirit during this time, because we see that that comes later in, in Acts, they didn't have the mind of Christ. They didn't have the mind of Christ. They got to walk with Christ and hear what he said, but they didn't share his mind with them. That's why they could hear all these parables and, and they have to ask, what does that mean, you know? That's how they don't understand what Jesus is doing yet and they're focused on the food first because they don't have the mind of Christ. <clears throat> and so I wanna delve, I wanna kind of get into this, what is this mind of Christ thing? And I'm gonna start at, at 1 Corinthians 2. Um, I'm gonna start at verse, verse 10, uh, 2 verse 10 here. And just listen to how amazing this is. It says, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. Now listen, for the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, searches everything, even the depths of God. I want to talk about that. I love how it's word, how, how this is worded. The Holy Spirit searches the depth of God, and God is infinite, but the Holy Spirit is in there just looking and, and just plugged in and seeing the depth and beauty of our Lord and Savior, right? I love that. I love how it's worded. And so I'm going to I'm going to keep going here. Uh, the spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thought except the spirit of that person which is in him? So no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. So the spirit of God also knows the thoughts of God. Now verse 12. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. When we get saved, we receive the Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit searches the depth of God. This Holy Spirit knows the thoughts of God. And that Holy Spirit is inside of us. So we have a direct connection to the depth of God. I love that. I love that God is, is so personal with us that he gives us this connection to him, right? He, he, he lets us experience the beauty of knowing him more. I love that. So it says, uh, we receive the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. Uh, verse 14, the natural person, the person who is not, not a Christian yet, who does not have this Holy Spirit, he does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. They're dumb. They're not smart. They don't make sense, right? Um, and, and if you want to know more about that, go back to, uh, go back to, to my, uh, last video on interrogatives, right? Um, but the spiritual person judges all things, but himself is to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord as so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. When we are in Christ, we get to have the mind of Christ. When we receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who searches the depths of God is inside of us and he helps us have the mind of Christ, right? Which means that we get to share thoughts with the Lord. We get to look at people the way that Jesus looks at people. We get to look at ourselves the way Jesus looks at people. And for a lot of you watching, you know how special that is to look at yourself and be happy, right? For, for We get to read the Bible for what it is. We get to read that Jesus crucified uh, was crucified for our sins and he rose again. And we get to like comprehend that. And we get to base our whole life about that because we have the mind of Christ. And when you have the mind of Christ, you get to take the word and you get to take God for what he is. And it changes your life. You'll no longer 
uh, experience fear, you'll no longer experience anxiety, um, you'll no longer uh, not be able to step out or walk across the room or go talk to that person or, or go pray for this person, you know what I'm saying? The mind of Christ directs you and it helps you. But here's the thing is we're not perfect. We're not perfect people. And we'll, and we'll never we'll never be truly perfect. Now we try to be like Christ, but we never will be Christ, right? And the wonderful thing is God knows this. I love that God knows this and he cares. And he cares about the fact that we're never gonna be perfect, but he wants us to keep going. So how do we know when we are officially have the mind of Christ, right? Like, is it something we just get? Is it something we have to work for? Uh, my friend asked uh, jokingly like, do we just receive like a certificate or a doctorate degree? We can hang it on our wall that says like officially Christ-minded, you know, like, like what happens here? So I'm gonna go to uh, Romans 12 verse two. <clears throat> and it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Because uh, we're not perfect. This worldly wisdom that, that finds this like God stuff kind of stupid, it's like really all we've ever known. Like we were kind of born into that. And so our minds are gonna wanna go back there, right? We're gonna run out of money and immediately go, what are we gonna do? We're gonna run out of food and be like the disciples and say, what are we gonna eat? We're going to have these doubts and, experience, and uh, fears and anxieties, right? But when you renew your mind and you repent and you turn back to God and you allow the Holy Spirit to direct your thoughts, and when you allow the Holy Spirit who searches the depths of God to direct your life, right? These, these things are, are little. No food, that's nothing. God can, can multiply food. No money, that's nothing. God can multiply money. God cares for you and he's going to take care of you, right? And he's going to equip you for what he called you to do. And when you have the mind of Christ, you're able, it says right here, <clears throat> you're able to discern the will of God, what he wants you to do for your life. And he may not show you what he wants you to do five years from now, three years from now, two years from now, but he may show you what your next step is. And that alone is something because every step leads to somewhere, right? And when you have the mind of Christ, you're able to discern what is good and acceptable and perfect. We're able to, to keep away from sin because we see sin for what God sees it as, right? Just as dirty, filthy, nasty, stupid stuff. And, and we're able to steer clear of that. So when you have the mind of Christ, it transforms your life. And if you're having a hard time as a Christian to live in this mind of Christ, allow yourself to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, and, and stop living according to what you think and start living according to what God thinks. And if you want to know what God thinks, look in the Bible and read the Word. Read it for yourself. See what He thinks about things. And then when you feel the Holy Spirit telling you to do something, follow that prompt because God is good and He's going to keep, He's going to take care of you, right? I just want to encourage you guys with that today. Um, that intro was really silly. I was just having fun with you guys, but uh, um, yeah, have a good rest of your day.